Whether you're grabbing a beer after the farmer's market or catching a nightcap with your friends, you need to stop by Jubex. Hi, I'm here with Jay Jubeck, co-owner of Jubeck New World Brewing. Jay, thanks for having us in. Absolutely. It's not a surprise to a lot of my viewers that I love beer, like a lot. I enjoy beer, I think it's complex, there's so much to it. There's so many incredible varieties as even you know, shown on this small flight that we have here. Um, but everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about your story and what makes you guys so different. Well, in terms of the beer, uh, we, our menu board is always changing, so we're always trying different things. Um, we started as home brewers, and really this is just a scaled up home brewing system. Right. So we are, uh, we're always trying new things and not afraid to do one-off beers that maybe won't, you know, be a huge uh, flagship or hit seller or whatever. But um, I guess in terms of beer like that, that's part of it, but we also like to brew classic styles mm -hmm. and... Right, right. Yeah, yeah, let's start here. I mean, this is a blonde, which is a, you know, pretty, pretty classic style. Uh, tell me a little bit about this guy. Yeah, so it'd actually be considered like a, an American cream ale. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of think of it as an American pub ale. It's just a very light, uh, nice, fresh, right. refreshing beer. Um, we first brewed that as... Uh, kind of an alternative for people coming in looking right. for a light beer. Looking for a lager or something like that. This and is, it's light and it doesn't have a lot of hops to it, does right. it? It's got a little bit, a little bit of hop, but most of the, the fruity character that you get is actually from the American ale yeast. So um, mm. you get a little bit of, um, of a sulfur from this yeast as well, which kind of gives, lends that lager-esque character. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's still a nice fruity ale. So. That's, that's, that's great. Now, I've noticed that literally your flight is taking flight. It's an airplane. What, what, tell me about that. What's going on there? Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm a pilot, and my business partner Dan is also a, a private pilot. So he's oh. not active, but he's done a little flying in the past. And we uh, early on settled on having the, the aviation theme mm -hmm. uh, integrated into our design and, and our space. So we have some airplanes up around the place, yeah. and yeah, it just made sense to continue that with the flight. Right. And, uh, <laughs> A good friend and part-time brewer, Jeremy Rudd, who also uh, is an artist and a woodworker, has done our tables. Yeah, this is, these are gorgeous. Tabletops, and he made these, and our tap panels, which look like uh, airplane Air propellers. Boils. So, yeah. yeah. This is an English pub ale. I mean, do, do you have a yeah. specific name for it, or? We just call it the English pub ale. That was um, an early recipe when we first got started. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking to do an English style that was uh, a little bit more malt forward, not quite as heavy, or not quite as uh, bitter and no. yeah. um, strong as like an ESB. Uh, so this would be like an ordinary or standard bitter. Mm -hmm. um, it's right around four and a half percent. So even with that, it's, right. it's close to the high end for an ordinary bitter. But it's just a nice um, little fruity, earthy, herbal notes from the right. hops um, and a rich malt character, some toastiness, bready. Right, so it's, it's a nice, it, well balanced. It's you know, I would say it's almost borderline, like almost a brown ale kind yeah. of a kind of a situation. It could definitely be darker than it is, mm -hmm. um, in terms of that style. Right, uh, that's sure. great. Moving on, what do we have in the middle here? So this is a uh, one that we have on right now called Jeremy's Folly. So the guy I was just talking about, Jeremy uh, Rudd, who has done some brewing for us, he kind of quit his day job about a year ago and is kind of striking into business for himself doing focusing on his his uh, wood shop and his, his mm -hmm. studio and he's part-time brewing now for us so when he quit his job it's he, he wanted to brew this beer as a sort of a token of that that transition in his life right and we're like sure go for it because we've never done any Belgian stuff before so this is like the first Belgian style we did right uh, so it's a it's like a Belgian double um, Got a lot of real fruity, uh, almost like grapey wine kind of character. Right. Wine Certainly. notes. We have been fermenting this in our uh, open fermenter that we have. It's an old dairy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an old dairy bulk tank that we picked up a couple oh, years ago. Oh, wow, cool. And that, the, just the shape of the vessel itself and that this you know increased surface area right. really gives the yeast um, a different environment to. Yeah, to a lot work of in. room, lot of room to breathe. That's, yeah, that's so, for sure. It's very, you know, almost has like a sweetness to it's, it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fairly sweet. 
it, it, that's that's great. And then moving on down, so this is an Iowa, Iowa Street. Iowa Street Pale Ale. Pale Ale. Yeah, so it's one of our first pale ales that we did. It's kind of a classic American pale ale, a lot of Cascade and Centennial hops. So you get the oh, yeah. lemony, grapefruit, citrus kind of right. character. Um, it's also a very clean fermenting uh, ale, American ale yeast. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit lager esque in that one. As right, well. right. It's it's got a lovely color to it, and it, it is very light. But and it's it's you know bordering on shandy territory with the amount of lemon yeah, in this it, thing. Yeah, the it's kind of interesting actually. We've been getting more of the lemon coming out, and I think that's the Centennial hops. Yeah. Uh, we're actually planning on the next batch, kind of switching the balance back more towards the Cascade. Okay. So it should be a little more grapefruity next time. And that, I mean, that's and part of the thing for that's us. That's experimenting always, and changing it and moving it, and that's the great thing about a brewery of this size yeah. is you can do right. those crazy Absolutely. things. We're still figuring out our recipes and how, you know, honestly for us it's just been transitioning from where we started with plastic fermenters, just, you know, we didn't have any money to get started, so we had to do right. things cheap and then upgraded to stainless steel and added the open fermenter, right. changing our, our system a little bit and then changing our process. Mm -hmm. um, we're also just figuring out which yeast strains we like to work with. You know, right. As soon as we kind of figure out what we want, maybe something changes and we decide we're going to try something else. And that's an example with this one is a couple of these actually is we've been trying some different yeasts and, and really liking the results, but oh, then cool that affects other components of the recipe, so we have to adjust. Right, and that's, well, I mean, and that's the whole weird biology chemistry of, <laughs> of brewing. And, it, you know, you push and pull yep. all around it. But that's the fun part for us. I think Dan and I, we like learning and experimenting as we go, and people seem to be okay with it, so. This is, this is fruity as all get out, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, apricot IPA. Um, so yeah, it's uh, American IPA, kind of more West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It is a West Coast in terms of more of a classic IPA bitterness, right, but right. It, uh, it's also got the fruit and a little bit of haze to it. So oh, yeah. it's, uh, and that again is one of our oldest recipes. That's interesting. You know, the yeast has an opportunity to work on that apricot, which gives it a little bit more of a subtle apricot flavor. It's not so fruity. It's, I, would say, I mean, it's heavy on the nose, yeah, but. Actually, this batch especially has been coming out or came out um, a little heavier on the apricot than normal. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and moving forward, what's mm -hmm. I mean, what's the next step? I mean, yeah, clearly keeping this community-based, yeah, you know, industry moving forward. But is there is there bigger? I mean, do you have your sights set higher, or yeah. or, or just you know keep on mm -hmm. plugging along? It's a good question. Uh, kind of going with the flow, honestly. Oh and yeah. Yeah, we were really kicking around the, the idea of expanding. Uh, the space next door here was available. Oh, that's uh, right. It is, it's, it's been leased out. It's okay. not, we're not doing it. It's not oh. us. So we, we really thought about it, but we really just like the place the way it is, mm -hmm. the space we have. Uh, it's, it, I know it would change. It may be better. I don't know. But uh, we decided with the the scope of that project, how, how much it was going to take on, right. and, and how it would change the feel. Uh, we decided to just kind of stick it out here where we're doing this now. We are going to get a little bit of uh, storage area in their basement over there. Okay. So that's going to enable us to add some more barrel. Uh, do some more barrel, yeah, barrel aging. Do with some more fermentation we tanks. We might add a couple more ferment fermentation tanks. Um, definitely mm -hmm. barrels. We're going to expand the sours. Um, probably some get some whiskey barrels and do some, some, uh, some whiskey aged stouts. And stuff oh, that's like awesome. That. So we'll see. That's kind of uh, in the next year or so we'll kind of figure out how we want to put that all together. Right. Well, Jay, I appreciate your time. I've enjoyed all of these beers. They've all been fantastic. I mean, it, it, even though I don't like fruit beers, I don't, I don't like them. That was that was good. That was a really that was a really great beer. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, you bet.